I'm just reading the new issue of the Make Noise Z. After all, it has an interview with Tony and Mark and Ben about the development of polymaths and the new universal synthesizer system. It has a reflection by Kelly about the experimental meditation club that she and Tony have been leading. It even has music recommendations from the entire Make Noise crew. Don't take my word for it though. Click the link in the video description to download a copy and read it for yourself. Let's start out with Multimod today. As the inaugural new Universal Synthesizer System module, it's a great friend to Polymaths and QXG. Now, you might remember in the Multimod intro, Tony said, We don't totally know what we're doing here because we don't know what we're doing. And that is true. We're building things that we don't necessarily have a blueprint for. He wasn't really kidding when it came to not knowing what we were doing, at least at that time. Polymaths was in development at the time we shot that, and many of the specifics of how it was going to work were still up in the air. One thing that we did know would be a through line was the channel index output and its ability to control the span parameter on polymaths and others in channel index mode. But at the time, we didn't even yet know exactly how it was going to work. So Multimod shipped with a slightly different version of the channel index output from what now appears on Polymaths. All of which is to say that the Multimod now is ready for a firmware update. If you're using Multimod, <coughs> if you're using Multimod with Polymaths, then you're gonna want this because it conforms that channel index output to what will be the precise standard going forward. Don't worry, it's not hard to install. The Multimod has a USB connection on the back, which we attach to our computer with a USB-C data cable. We go to this link, makenoisemanuals.com slash firmware slash index.html, and click connect. This accesses all USB devices that are connected to our computer. Now, while holding the hold button, we power on our system, and Multimod appears in this list as DFU in FS mode. We select that, and now we can select the module, Multimod, and the version, and go ahead and start the download. Once it's finished, we get a done message. We cycle power on the system, and the Multimod boots up with the new firmware. This firmware also lets us select the output range for the Multimod's internal LFOs when nothing is patched to the input. If we hold reset and press shape, then we select between 0 to 10 volt plus or minus 5 volt and 0 to 5 volt shapes. I'm generally a positive LFO person, but I do find the bipolar version particularly useful if I'm modulating the spread parameter on polymaths. This knob is a bipolar combo pod and that allows me to modulate it in both directions. With modulation depth set by the attenuverter. If you think about it, modulating the spread parameter, it's sending that modulation signal in different amounts to all eight channels with up to five parameters each. So it's a modulation bus with 40 destinations. But let's talk about cycling. If you've used maths, you know how this works. Press the cycle button to make the channel cycle. Basically, whenever the function gets to the end of its fall stage, it activates again. Same on the polymaths, but here it's eight channels, each of them reactivating themselves over and over again. Let's check out a quick clip that didn't quite make it into the intro video. Polymaths also has a cycle button and jack that operate very much like those on the maths module. When cycle is turned on, each channel will reactivate anytime it is at the end of its function. We can spread or modulate parameters to get a number of unique cycling functions happening all at once.
also another cycle mode. Follow the leader. We long press the cycle button to switch to this mode. Here, each time a function gets to the end of its fall phase, instead of reactivating itself, it activates the next channel, creating a chain of functions. It's also possible to create multiple simultaneous chains. The chain only stops if the next channel along is still in its rise time when it's attempting to be reactivated. Matching goals for this system are yet unknown. Let's try something out using the follow the leader cycle mode. I'm gonna send an attenuated cycle from maths into the multi-mod. Actually, first let's skip multi-mod and just patch it into polymaths span input so we can see how this works. Channels activate as they are touched by this incoming CV. As we change the attenuation level on math's output, we also change the total range of channels that get activated. We can, of course, also do this with the span input attenuverter, but since we're going to be patching this through the multi mod, uh, I prefer to attenuate at the source. That's just kind of my standard practice at this point. You do you. Anyway, let's go ahead and patch that voltage to the multi-mod. Now I've got the read shape set to stepped random. What this is going to do is choose a random point from the fast incoming signal to send on to polymaths. So we're activating random stages within the range set by the amount of attenuation. We can also invert to activate from right to left instead of left to right. I'll note that while the waveforms we're hearing are coming from the they're just placeholders. You could use different oscillators or different waveforms from a single oscillator or whatever you've got in your system. Okay, but, so the random read. I think I've talked about this before, but the random output reflects not only the total amplitude of what's coming into it, but also the amount of time it spends in different regions. So, for example, when the function we're sending it is linear, the amount of time or rather, we get a pretty even selection of channels here. When it's expo, it spends more time lower and we're more likely to get the lower channels. And when it's log, more likely to get the higher channels. 
it's not really that important for the patch we're working with here. I just, I just love that. Programming synth with patch cables. But so anyway, we've got a tight little selection of four, sometimes five to six, activated channels here. Let's take a slower gate source, the end of rise from the other side of this maths, and we'll use it to turn on follow the leader cycling periodically. Every time the cycling gets turned on, those first four channels set off a chain that extends out to the right. We've got the fall time spread negative towards the right side of the polymath, so these rightmost channels activate and pass on the chain faster. They're shorter than the leftmost channels. Another thing to consider here is the stereo image. When the QXG's X spread controls are both turned up, the polymass channels are basically represented left to right. Which makes a great starting position for multi-channel patching. In a patch like this, it means that we're mostly weighted far more to the left. We're activating the leftmost channels more, most consistently, and we only really hear the right when the cycling turns on. I think it's kind of cool to have it start in the left and sort of pop off to the right when we bounce out those cycle chains. But if we want a more even stereo image, we can just turn one of these X spread controls to the left, and that will pass them out more evenly. And if we put either or both somewhere not quite at the extreme, then no channel will be hard panned. It's all a matter of taste and what you want to do in a particular patch. In the coming weeks, we'll go deeper on QXG and of course on some of the other gate inputs on polymaths like reset and accumulate. This is a complex module with some complex concepts, even in the context of a modular synth. It's hard to get everything all across at once. Explaining any one part of it kind of necessitates we already understand all the other parts. If you have specific questions about how polymaths works, don't hesitate to drop them into the comments section and we'll try to make sure that all the information we can cover is covered. Also, let's not forget that we've still got the 12 string iterative music project going. I'll link to that video playlist in the description as well. I've already started receiving some visual scores for the next iteration and I'd encourage everyone who's interested to consider creating a score if you have time. We'll all be realizing each other's scores and I think it's gonna be a really fun time. Thanks so much to everybody who's already contributed to this project. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching and happy patching.